From the land of sky blue waters comes the beer refreshing hams. Oh my god. This is Kurt Berglund with another Pine Tar Baseball Negro Leagues Great Team Set Preview. Today is the 12th preview in our series. The 12th team in the series. And you would think that it might be the end of this video series. But you'd be wrong. We have a few more things to do after today. So, uh, first things first, let's talk about what's going on. The Pine Tar Baseball Great Team, Negro League Great Team's Kickstarter is now active and linked below this video. Check it out. We need your support to release the set. And that's why it's a Kickstarter. So check out the Kickstarter today. Check out Pine Tar Baseball at ttlbaseballgame.com. Today's team, again, this preview in no particular order, features the 1947 New York Cubans winner of the Negro National League in 1947, winner of the World Series in 1947 in five games over the Cleveland Buckeyes. There was one tie in that series. Four games to one, they won the series. Let's talk about what was going on in the world in 1947. U.S. Secretary of State George Marshall announced a massive aid plan to help Europe recover from World War II. The U.N. divided Palestine into a Jewish state, an Arab state, and a small international zone, including Jerusalem. The Truman Doctrine opposed communism in Greece and Turkey. The GI Bill helped one million vets buy homes and go to college. The population of the U.S. nearly doubled as the baby boom began. The House Un-American Activities Committee was formed and Hollywood blacklisted suspected communists. President Truman ordered the armed forces to integrate Unexplainable debris found on a ranch in Roswell, New Mexico generated nationwide accounts of UFO sightings. UFO sightings. Top movies and plays were The Miracle on 34th Street, not The Miracle on 35th Street. That was when the White Sox won the division in 1983 and a streetcar named Desire. Anne Frank's diary was discovered in Amsterdam and soon became a bestseller in Europe. Howdy Doody, a popular puppet show for children, entertained millions on TV. TV uh, Groucho Marx's You Bet Your Life was the most popular radio show in the country. And Jackie Robinson and Larry Doby debuted in the White Big Leagues. So, What's going on here is that the Negro Leagues are still playing incredibly competitive, incredibly entertaining baseball in 1947, even though the color line had been broken in the major leagues. If you haven't purchased this book, I strongly recommend that you do so. John Holway's the complete book of baseball's Negro Leagues, the other half of baseball history. Um, if you've been watching my video series, this book should be in your library, the Biographical Encyclopedia of the Negro Baseball Leagues. It is, a, it is not loaded with stats. What it is loaded with is uh, qualitative information about Negro League players who were only in, in uh, the Negro Leagues briefly and 
the career guys. Everybody, well, I shouldn't say that. Some people criticize the book because it's they say it's not complete enough, but wow. This book is thick. 3D. It's coming right at you. That's a thick book. All right, let's talk about the 1947 New York Cubans. Selected by me for this set to honor a huge segment of the American population that is sometimes forgotten was part of the Negro League experience, and that is Latin ball players. The New York Cubans, this is no charity case, the New York Cubans were an excellent team with names you recognize. We've talked about roster size in this series before, ranges in the Negro Leagues from 14 on the low end to maybe 16, 17, 18 on the high end. This team features a roster of 16 players. You'll get all 16 cards in the Pine Tar set for the New York Cubans. Let's go through the uh, roster. Pitchers include Patricio Scandalberry, Lino Donoso, Louis Tiant Sr., Louis Tiant Sr., Barney Morris, Martin Crew, and Dave Barnhill make up the six pitchers on the pitching staff. Position players, Lou Loudon, Lorenzo Cabrera, Fernando Diaz Pedroso, Minnie Minoso, Silvio Garcia, Cleveland Clark, Pedro Paez, Claro Duaney, Rabbit Martinez, and Ray Noble. Let's talk about the team. This was an excellent team. And again, we're in the 40s now. The training for players is better. The fields are better. The teams are excellent. The players that they're producing are excellent. The 30s and 40s clearly mark the deepest decades for Negro League's talent. And this team is an excellent example of that. In the Negro National League, the 1947 New York Cubans were third in uh, OPS batting. They were second in batting average. They were second in on-base percentage. In terms of pitching, they were first in ERA. They were first in strikeout to walk ratio, and they were first in whip. Team could pitch. They had plenty of arms, and they had a left-hander named Louis Tian Sr., who didn't throw hard, but he knew how to pitch. And the off-speed stuff that he threw was enough for a 2.37 earned run average in the World Series winning year. He was the ace of the staff of this team. Leno Donoso had an ERA of 2.18. The team earned run average. The team earned run average was 2.79. We've talked in this series about teams that have incredible offenses. Teams that'll just beat your brains in in two or three innings. The score will be so lopsided you can't possibly catch up. Well, this team is a little bit of the reverse because they can shut you down and pitch extremely well. And then there's the hitting. Let's talk about the hitting. Uh, first baseman, Lorenzo Cabrera with a slash line of 295 batting average, 361 on base, 452 slugging. That's for starters. Shortstop, Silvio uh, Garcia, 335 batting average, 400 on base, 430 slugging. And then there's that third baseman, Orestes Mini Minoso, 356 batting average, 406 on base, 
508 slugging, all from the leadoff position in the batting order. Many Minoso in the Negro Leagues could beat you a lot of different ways. He could beat you with the long ball, he could beat you getting on base, and he could certainly beat you with his legs. Let's look at the batting order frequently used by the 1947 New York Cubans. Leading off at third base, Mini Minoso. Batting second, uh, Pedro Paez. Batting third, first baseman, Lorenzo Cabrera. Batting fourth, second baseman, uh, sorry, Fernando Diaz Pedroso. Batting fifth, Right fielder, Claro Daney, Claro Duaney, sorry. Batting sixth, left fielder, Cleveland Clark. Batting seventh, catcher, Lou Loudon. Batting eighth, shortstop, Silvio Garcia. Batting ninth is the pitcher. This is a team that flies under the radar in terms of great teams in Negro Leagues history, partly because they come just a moment after Jackie Robinson breaks the color barrier. Partly because I think this is not a roster made up entirely of African Americans. This is a roster made up of primarily Latin players. So there may be a number of things going on here, but make no mistake, this team is a great one and deserves to be among the 12 best teams in Negro Leagues history, in my opinion. I will be very interested to see how it finishes in your leagues and tournaments once you get this set for Pine Tar Baseball. And now we come to my favorite part of every video, and that is, why will this team win your league or tournament? And then the flip side, why won't this team win your league or tournament? Well, if this team wins your league or tournament among all of these 12 teams, the greatest in Negro League's history, they're going to do it because Mini Minoso can't be stopped. If he gets hot, he can, clear, he can carry a ball club, and he just might do that. The second piece to the puzzle for this team to win is their pitching's gonna get hot, and it's gonna shut down the attacks of many of the heavy-hitting clubs in this set. It'll be interesting to see if they can do that when you play Pine Tar Baseball. If they don't win your league or tournament, why will that be the case? Well, my theory here is that if this team gets too far behind, it's gonna be difficult for them to catch up. If they're hitting, I'm sorry, if their pitching is tagged, if their pitchers do get rocked for some reason, and I don't think that's going to happen very often. The offense is going to be under a lot of pressure to score runs. This is not a power-laden offense. This is a Negro Leagues special. Getting on base, stealing bases, using the hit and run, and putting pressure on the defense. But if they get too far behind, it reduces the amount that you can use a running game, and that might make things difficult. But I think this team is going to be in the vast majority of the games that it plays, and I would certainly call this one a dark horse to do very, very well in your leagues and tournaments. All right. Um... That concludes our preview of the 1947 New York Cubans. Louis Tiant and Minnie Minoso being the headliners of the club, but this team can play, and make no mistake about that. Tomorrow, we preview a free team that you can get from me just for sending me an email. It's the 1934 Philadelphia Stars, the 13th team in a 12-team set. They didn't make the set, so we're giving them away for free, 
but you have to ask for them. Or go to our Facebook page and download them yourself. Either way works, but I'm going to tell you about the 1934 Philadelphia Stars tomorrow night. Then, we will have a wrap-up show that pulls all of these previews together, tells you a little bit more about the set, tells you how the set was designed, the research that I did that went into it, so that you understand a little bit better how these cards were made. Looking forward to both tomorrow night, the Philadelphia Stars, and Saturday night with the preview show that goes over everything that we did and reviews all of it for you. Please check out the Kickstarter linked for you in the description of this video. You'll be glad that you did. We are trying to honor these stars by creating an exciting set of cards for you to use with Pine Tar Baseball, and we think we've done that. Check out Pine Tar Baseball at ttlbaseballgame.com and join me here tomorrow night for the preview of the 1934 Philadelphia Stars. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate everything that you're doing by watching and staying, keeping up with this video series. Feel free to send questions in the comments. I look forward to hearing from you again. My name's Kurt Berglund. Have a good night. So long, everybody.